Hi, this is Erin Sadler, and today I'm doing a 10-minute overview of the NGSS. So today I have two sets of standards that we're going to be looking at. I have the fifth grade standards and then the middle school life science standards, and I'll talk about um, the difference between those two. So here are the fifth grade standards. Um, you can just Google fifth grade NGSS, um, and this will kind of be our elementary school example. So when you scroll down, there are several spaces within um, the standards. So the top one is for performance expectations. Then we have the science and engineering practices here on the left, the disciplinary core ideas in the middle, and the cross-cutting concepts over here on the right. Disciplinary core ideas are going to be the things that you're most familiar with. This is the content. So if you've been teaching science for a long time, you're very familiar with these types of standards. So in this case, we're looking at structure and properties of matter and chemical reactions for fifth grade. Up at the top, we have performance expectations, and the performance expectations explain how students will be assessed on the content. So for example, 5 PS 1-1 states that students will develop a model to describe that matter is made of particles that are too small to be seen. The science and engineering practices describe how students will discover the content. The science and engineering practices are what I like to think of as tools in your student's tool belt. These tools help students uncover the disciplinary core ideas and cross-cutting concepts. So for example, here we have developing and using models, planning and carrying out investigations, and using mathematics and computational thinking. Over on the far right, we have the cross-cutting concepts. The cross-cutting concepts are overarching ideas in science that connect all domains of science. The cross-cutting concepts also help us to better understand the disciplinary core ideas. At the bottom are the Common Core State Standards connections. They have ELA connections and math connections for that grade level. The science and engineering practices, disciplinary core ideas, and cross-cutting concepts are often referred to as the three dimensions of the next generation science standards. We often use acronyms to describe these. So the science and engineering practices are the SEPs, the disciplinary core ideas are the DCI, the cross-cutting concepts are the CCCs, and we often refer to the performance expectations as PEs. So let's look a little bit more closely at the performance expectations. Let's look at 5 ESS 1-1. It states that students should support an argument that differences in the apparent brightness of the sun compared to other stars is due to their relative distances from Earth. Students will use the science and engineering practice of engaging in an argument from evidence. You can see that this is associated with the performance expectation down below. Students will be looking at the disciplinary core idea of Earth and the solar system. They need to know that the orbits of Earth around the Sun and the Moon around the Earth, together with the rotation of Earth about an axis between its north and south poles, cause observable patterns. Students will use the science and engineering practice of engaging in an argument to better understand the disciplinary core idea. The performance expectation also contains the cross-cutting concept of scale, proportion, and quantity. Let's go ahead and look at a middle school life science performance expectation. So MSLS 3-1 says that students will develop and use a model to describe why stu structural changes to genes, mutations, located on chromosomes may affect proteins and may result in harmful, beneficial, or neutral effects to the structure and function of the organism. Students will use the science and engineering practice of developing and using models, and they will look at the cross-cutting concept of structure and function. Students need to understand a lot of content in order to be able to meet the performance expectation. When I first started teaching to the NGSS, this was pretty much the only information that was available. However, now there's a bunch of other resources that can be used to understand the performance expectations, science and engineering practices, disciplinary core ideas, and cross-cutting concepts. So the first one of those tools that I'm going to talk about is evidence statements. 
For each performance expectation, there is an evidence statement. So I can Google, for example, MSLS 3-1 evidence statement to find a PDF of the evidence statement for this performance expectation. The evidence statement provides me with more information. Down at the bottom, there's a section that's labeled observable features of the student performance by the end of the course. Because the science and engineering practice is developing and using a model, the first section is components of the model. The second section is relationships. Students will need to show the relationships between objects in their model. The final section is connections. Students will use the model to describe that structural changes may result in observable effects at the level of the organism, including why structural changes to genes, and then it has all of the connections that they should be able to make. Again, evidence statements are available for every performance expectation. When you're provided with a list of standards that need to be taught for your grade level, they will often list the performance expectations rather than the science and engineering practices, disciplinary core ideas, or cross-cutting concepts. Another great resource that's available are the matrix forks from NSTA. These are available for each of the three domains, and you can Google DCI matrix fork NSTA or science and engineering matrix fork NSTA in order to find those. So here's a copy of the NSTA disciplinary core idea matrix fork. And what it does is it shows the progression from kindergarten through 12th grade. So all students in kindergarten through 12th grade learn the concept of structure and function um, from a life science perfect perspective. So the first time that this is taught is in first grade in 1LS1-1. It's taught again in fourth grade. Um, and then it's taught in middle school and high school as well. I find this to be helpful because not only does it show me what students will be learning at each grade level, but it also shows me what they should wait to learn until a different grade level. Um, I teach middle school, so this is a really great tool for me because I can see what they should already know and what I should not be teaching them because I should save that for high school. Here's the matrix fork for the science and engineering practices. And I really like this because it provides me with more details about what students should be doing in each grade level for each science and engineering practice. So there's a page for each science and engineering practice. This one is asking questions and defining problems. Um, and it goes all the way down through obtaining, evaluating, and communicating information. There are eight science and engineering practices. So let's look at the science and engineering practice planning and carrying out investigations. So the science and engineering practices go through the entire grade band. Every student will see the science and engineering practice of planning and carrying out investigations, hopefully in every single grade level. This is a little bit more difficult in kindergarten through second grade and third through fifth because there tends to be a little bit more um, focus on specific science and engineering practices within those grade levels. But once you start to learn to use the science and engineering practices like tools in a tool belt, um, you can use them interchangeably. There's no requirement that you only have to show students the science and engineering practices that are listed in the performance expectation. So in this case, by the end of fifth grade, students need to be able to plan and conduct an investigation collaboratively to produce data to serve as a basis for evidence using fair tests in which variables are controlled and the number of trials is considered. So third through fifth grade, students are already talking about variables. That changes slightly in sixth through eighth grade as we introduce independent and dependent variables as well as controls.